Glasswire is the ultimate firewall and network monitoring software. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Moddy here back with another video. Today we're here with a hard drive buyer's guide. Now, this is a little bit of a follow-up video to our general, uh, I guess, uh, storage guide that we did not too long ago. In fact, you can find it right up there. A little bit of uh, time has passed since that video, but today we're doing a bit more of a follow-up and a more focus on the hard drive side of the story. So the previous video was more about what kind of storage options are out there, but today we're really focusing in on the hard drive side and things you should really consider if you are gonna be purchasing a brand new hard drive for your next build or just want to upgrade your existing system. Now there's a number of people out there thinking well okay then I'll just grab a hard drive, chuck it in my system and I'm all good to go provided it gets the right amount of storage and whilst you may be kind of right in thinking that hard drives are more than just boxes with a whole bunch of storage in them. There's a lot of different things at play which can either give you a really good experience or a not so good experience. So sure you may be right in just saying it's a box, get any odd hard drive, put it in your system, boom you've got storage. Storage. But again, today we're going to be taking a closer look to see what makes up a hard drive, what you should consider when buying, and really what you should actually go ahead and do when picking out a brand new hard drive. So let's kick it into the first and most obvious thing, and that is the actual form factor of the drive. This is something that most people kind of instantly click, whether they're going to buy one or the other, but there are two options of different sizes on the market at the time of recording. Now, obviously, as time goes on, there's probably going to be newer standards coming out and all those kind of things, but at the moment, we have three and a half inch hard drives as I do have right here today and these guys at a laptops which have two and a half inch hard drives now Generally speaking, these bigger guys are referred to as desktop hard drives as usually they're found in desktops and also two smaller ones are usually referred to as laptop hard drives as well. They're usually found in laptops, but that doesn't mean you can't use, say, a laptop drive in a desktop and kind of vice versa, but there's a few other reasons why you don't want to use a desktop drive in a laptop other than it probably not fitting. So if you are looking at a storage option, sure, three and a half inch drives may be fine, but if you do want to save space, maybe building a really small system and you still want a hard drive, a two and a half inch drive may also to be another option. Now, again, it usually comes down to what you're actually building or what you're gonna be upgrading as to what drive options you do have. Again, most of the time for desktop users, just throw in a three and a half inch drive and you're fine. But if you are building in a small form factor system or if you're just trying to upgrade a laptop, a two and a half inch drive is definitely the way you're going. Now, the differences between the two aren't exactly the world's biggest differences. I did a video right up there. Sure, there's a slight performance gap between the two different actual sizes, but honestly, you're not losing out too much performance and really you couldn't notice it in day-to-day -day usage unless you were specifically looking at performance numbers all the time but for most part I don't look at performance numbers when I'm playing video games so it doesn't matter too much. Now there are some benefits to the smaller option of drives for example being a lot less power hungry for some of the time and also to generally speaking able to fit more of them in the same amount of space. However there are some downsides again because they're so much smaller and use a lot less power not all the time are they able to achieve the same uh, speeds in terms of RPM so comparing them to their bigger versions there can be some performance loss there and in some situations not all the time but sometimes two and a half inch drives can be a little bit louder uh, than their three and a half inch offering and I guess also to one more obvious one is because they're a lot smaller they can't fit as many platters in there meaning storage sizes can be a little bit limited now as we are moving forward in technology obviously there's getting more and more density but at the time of recording big three and a half inch drives generally speaking have more storage than their smaller two and a half inch options. Now flipping over to the other side where we have our three and a half inch drives, they're obviously a lot bigger and they're really for whatever you want to do. Rather than being limited to small builds and laptops, you can really put them into servers, desktop PCs, external applications. They are very, very flexible. And because they're designed for more of these desktop environments, generally speaking, they'll be more power hungry, but also to offer way more options, way more capacities, and also to way better performance or generally speaking, better performance. But generally, the first thing you'd want to do when going ahead and picking up a hard drive is just work out what kind of size you need, big or on the smaller side. Once we've worked out the physical size of what we're going to be looking at, we do need to take a look under the hood at what actually makes up these drives. As at the moment, there's three main storage technologies that make up a desktop hard drive from 5400 RPM, 7200 RPM, and also to SSHDs. Now, most common desktop hard drives like WD Blues and some Seagate drives run at 5400 RPM, which offer good performance, but also to means they're not exactly going to be pumping out a ton of heat and also to not the most power hungry drive. So great 
great for kind of everyday applications, but when it comes to more specific applications, a lot of reads and writes and generally performance oriented tasks, they may be lacking a little bit in that department. And that is where our 7200 RPM drives come out. Now, if you want to know the difference, well, we've conveniently done a video right there. We'll link down below if I've run out of cards at this point, but I've done a video comparing the two and honestly, there isn't exactly the world's biggest difference, but there is still a difference. So if you sort of add up your little bit of performance of your hard drive, a little bit more out of your CPU, GPU and all that kind of stuff, you may actually be getting a fair bit of a performance increase if you do your research correctly. But things like the WD Black Seagate Barracuda drives are designed for these more performance applications and come in with that 7200 RPM rating. Now you can learn again more about it up there or link down below, but there is a slight difference. But all in all, we do need to work out what we're going to be picking up there, 5400 RPM or 7200 RPM. But there's also to a bit of a third option. Now this is not as popular and that is the SSHD. Now this basically takes the awesomeness of the SSD world and kind of merges it with our big three and a half inch drives. Usually they're paired up with 7200 RPM. Some of the time they are paired up with 5200 RPM and basically allow you to have the mass storage of these guys, but without the sort of lower speeds as they use an SSD to add performance to these guys. Now, unfortunately though, these SSDs that are on board with SSHD drives are only about five to 10 gigabytes in most cases. So you won't exactly be storing, well, your programs on this SSD. Actually, you won't even see it show up on your drive. When you plug it in, you'll just see the one drive and you won't even be able to access it all. And that is because the software running these drives actually does all the work for you. So rather than figuring out what you're gonna be putting on that five to 10 gigs, it's all done dynamically by the system itself. It looks at what you're gonna be using and it just caches things depending on the software or it'll store them in that uh, little bit of SSD depending again on the drive. Now, the benefit of this is obviously you're getting much better performance, but on the downside, you can't actually access the SSD. Now, much like a turbocharger on a car, it will add performance to the drive, but it is no replacement for a dedicated SSD. So sure, it's definitely faster than a standard mechanical drive, but it isn't as good as having a dedicated SSD. Having SSD and hard drive is still the best option, but if you want to kind of meet them in the middle, definitely an SSHD is a good option there. Now, after we've picked out what kind of technology we're using, 7200, 5200, 1000, 10,000, whatever we're going to be picking up, we then need to go ahead and work out what we're going to be doing for the actual capacity of our drive. Now, for most people who are not content creators like myself, a four terabyte drive will be more than enough for a very, very long time. One terabyte is even very much overkill for a lot of people out there, whereas people like myself can fill 115 terabytes in just a few short years. So it definitely comes down to what you're going to do as to how much space you do need. But a definitely great starting point here in 2018 is four terabytes for your mass storage and a 256 gig or something like the SSD. But if you want to know more about SSDs, a video is definitely to come. But generally speaking, a four terabyte drive is a really great starting point for a lot of people out there as it offers you a ton of storage. And there's a very high chance you probably won't be filling that four terabytes for quite some time unless you're doing some sort of content creation. So generally speaking, storage is pretty hard to say you need this many terabytes, you need this many terabytes. So generally, I'd go ahead and look at what you already have and whether it's adequate enough. If you've already got a four terabyte drive in your existing system and you're looking for more storage or you just want the same kind of longevity out of your storage, well, another four terabyte drive might be the way to go. But if you're running out of storage all the time, then obviously a bigger drive is what you need. So all in all, when it comes to actually capacities of how much you want to well buy on your drive, it will definitely come down to what you you need rather than what I would recommend. So definitely what you need is well, what you need. Now in the same boat as it's sort of up to you what you want is also to the price point. Now, sure there are some general rules of thumb that you should really follow like don't buy too cheap and don't buy too expensive because they're either ends of the spectrum, buying too expensive won't necessarily give you better performance and buying too cheap will probably just give you something that's gonna die really soon. But the price that you're gonna be spending on the drive will definitely come down to what kind of technology you picked but also to how big in terms of capacity. So this is just another one that's kind of hard for me to recommend, but definitely do your research and find one that you do like. So, okay, then at this point, I know what kind of physical size I need. I know the speed of the drive and I know what kind of drive and the capacity and all that kind of stuff. I'm ready to go to the shop, right? Well, actually there's one other curveball that's been thrown into the mix lately. And that is the, well, creation of drives that are more suited to different applications. Sure, you could pick up a 7,200 RPM drive that's four terabytes, that is all mechanical, but you're gonna find like 10 different options from one manufacturer. And this is where we need to actually look into the different 
different applications that different tribes had. And on the market today, there are really three main categories or three main applications for hard drives outside of, well, the server and super high end enterprise data center kind of situations. So there are, I guess, three main topics. First and foremost, we have your sort of uh, NAS and server drives. Again, we'll get into these in just a moment, but we have our NAS and server drives. We have our performance drive and also to our general day-to-day -day usage drives. Now, many companies like WD and Seagate have dedicated and very clear different lines. For example, this WD Blue is very clearly different to that WD Black, and, and WD Blue being your everyday computing drive is obviously different to your performance WD Black, and Seagate is very much the same on their side. For example, their NAS drives being Iron Wolf is very much different to Barracuda, so there are very clear and distinct lines between the two different drives. So finding out which one you need to pick up can be really easy thanks to the fact that a lot of manufacturers are making it really easy and clear to distinguish between the two different technologies. Now as the name suggests, well the servers and NAS drives are dedicated for servers and NAS. These are generally drives that are well suited for that kind of environment. Better vibration absorption, absorption if you can call it that, but generally speaking better to work in large arrays. For example on the WD side, WD has their WD Red series and RE series and Red Pro which are more of your server and enterprise application drives, doesn't mean you can't use them in a desktop, and then on the Seagate side we also do have the Iron Wolf series, again designed for the server side, whereas on the performance side it's generally speaking on the WD side covered by the WD Black and also too on the Seagate side generally covered by the Seagate Barracuda drives, and then for day to day offerings out of well either company we're looking at something like again the WD Blue for our day to day kind of computing, and again Seagate has their own offerings there as well, so when you are picking up a drive not only do you have to to sort of take everything we've already talked about into consideration, but now we need to actually look at the series that these drives do come out of. Now, we could actually make an entire video about the differences between Seagate and also two WDs, different SKUs and all that kind of stuff, but let's face it, that would be a very long and probably boring video. But generally speaking, find what kind of drive you want, find the specifications you want, but also to look at what kind of series or what kind of SKUs they are as to what kind of tasks you'll be doing. Now, both Seagate, WD, and actually a lot of other hard drive manufacturers out there have really easy tools to help you find out what drives are actually needed for what you need to buy. So don't worry too much if you can't exactly remember WD Black does this or WD Red does this or WD Blue does this. Jump on whatever website of whatever hard drive you'll be buying and just check what those SKUs are for and it's going to be really obvious. For example, if we jump on the WD website, we can kind of see that the red drives are obviously servers whereas black is obviously performance. Even if we don't read a single word on this page, the pictures kind of do speak for themselves. But simply put, just check what the manufacturer advertises as to what you're going to be doing, line them up, and you should be all good. So all in all, a bit of a TLDR time if you couldn't be bothered watching the entire video. Hard drives can be really simple just to buy, but if you look closely, they are very complex little boxes with mechanical bits and pieces in them. If you do ask yourself some simple questions, like what physical size do I need, what kind of speed or technology am I after, SSHD or mechanical hard drives, and also to what kind of capacity and what kind of drive category I'm after, you'll have a very high chance of actually getting a drive that will suit you very well and actually last you a fair bit of time. Both Seagate and WD offer some really great utilities that I'll try and link down below. I know that they were around a little while ago, but I can't remember where they're still open, but I'll leave as much as I can linked down below. And unfortunately, there's not one single drive to rule them all. Unfortunately, I can't just hold up a hard drive and say, buy this drive, it's the best. You should go ahead and buy it because it will do everything you need. Unfortunately, everyone has a completely different use case for their hard drive. Some people may need more storage and some people may need more speed. But do your research and follow some of the tips that we did talk about here today. And again, you'll get a really decent drive. But let me know down in that comment section if you have any questions about your next hard drive purchase as I do happen to love storage myself and absolutely love talking about it. But if you don't have a question, let me know down in that comment section. Would you prefer one massive large hard drive or one small but fast SSD? Let me know down in that comment section. If you want to pick up any of the drives that have been waving and pointing to here today or anything like that, you can find them linked in that description box along with any other links down there. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.